Joyce and Bridget had been sitting at a window table in a small cafe for more than an hour, but they still hadn't touched their coffee. The friends were staring intensely through the window across the street. Joyce felt tired and berated herself for having let her friend lead her on. She had a lot of urgent work to do, and they had already spent so much time without any use. And all because Bridget told her about her husband cheating on her with a young beauty. And right now, sitting in a cafe in front of Albert's office, they tried to catch the cheater red-handed. Joyce did not fully understand why all this was necessary, but Bridget was adamant. After waiting for another 10 minutes, Joyce finally decided to leave. She had already risen out of the table when suddenly Bridget yanked her by the sleeve and pointed her eyes in the direction of the street. Albert, Joyce's husband, was walking out of the office building with a spectacular black-haired young woman in a miniskirt. She smiled at the man and told him something enthusiastically. Albert opened the car door in front of her, and the luxurious black sedan, gleaming with a fresh polish, drove the couple away in an unknown direction. Bridget rejoiced. The woman was happy to finally be able to open her friend's eyes, but Joyce was not amused. Despite Bridget's encouraging words, Joyce was distraught, and her eyes welled up with tears. She did not want to stay there any longer, and after a reserved goodbye, she hurried off. Joyce got out into the street, shivering with cold. An icy autumn wind chilled her to the bone and she pulled the collar of her coat tighter. On the way home in the cab, the woman tried to hold back her tears, but they would treacherously roll down her cheeks. She replayed in her head the recent event and thought about how easy it was to lose happiness in an instant. So many times she had heard from acquaintances about cheating, divorces, and scandals, and she never would have thought that she would find herself in such a situation, too. Albert was the closest person to her in the world and the best man, who had never given her a reason to be jealous. Joyce was always amazed at how lucky she was in life. Growing up in an orphanage, she was able to make her way in life and achieve everything on her own. At school, the girl discovered a clear talent for mathematics. While others had trouble adding fractions, she easily multiplied and divided large numbers and solved complex logarithmic problems. Naturally, she immediately went to college and graduated with honors. After graduation, she got a job at a prestigious company as an analyst and soon she met her future husband. Joyce still did not understand what the handsome Albert, the son of wealthy parents, had found in her. But after a year of dating, he asked her to marry him. His parents, of course, were against the union of their son with the woman who had been brought up in an orphanage. His mother even tried to talk her son out of getting married, saying that Joyce just wanted to have a baby with him and live her whole life carelessly at his expense. But Albert did not listen to his mother. The wedding took place and the young couple were happy despite everything. Albert's mother's prediction did not come true because after 10 years of marriage, the couple had no children. Joyce tried everything and went to different doctors, but finally the diagnosis was ruthless, infertility. Since then, the main thing in Joyce's life became care of her husband, but today everything has changed. She was driving home and wondering what she should do now and how to live her life. Upon entering the house, Joyce became a little more cheerful and decided to cook a delicious dinner. She imagined that Albert would come. They would sit down at the table and calmly talk about everything. She kept convincing herself that she shouldn't have believed Bridget. Surely it turned out that it was not a mistress at all, but just a colleague at work. Joyce's mood improved noticeably. She looked around the beautifully laid table and wondered why her husband was gone so long. She even went to the window in anticipation, but did not see anyone like him. Only a man in shabby clothes and tattered boots was sitting on a bench near the building, hunched over with his head down. It was a drizzling November rain outside, and Joyce, in an act of pity for the poor vagrant, put on her jacket, took an umbrella, and ran out into the street. You will get completely wet and freeze here if you have nowhere else to go. Let's go to my place. At least have some tea. Warm yourself up a bit, she said to the stranger. The man looked at her surprised, but obeyed and followed her up to the apartment. 
Now Joyce could see the stranger's face carefully and was dumbfounded. In front of her stood Hugh, a former classmate and friend of her youth, once her faithful admirer. Hugh? Is that you? What a meeting! Joyce shouted, embracing the obviously confused man. I don't remember you. I don't remember anything at all, the man mumbled confusedly. But Joyce was not listening. She looked at her childhood friend, sadly, remembering how he had tried to woo her awkwardly at school, gave her bouquets of daisies, carried her school bag, but she paid no attention to her admirer, busy thinking about her studies and preparing for college. And when he tried to kiss her at graduation, she dodged his embrace and laughed. Since then, each of them went their own way, and today's meeting just seemed amazing. Joyce understood that the lives of the graduates of the orphanage were rarely successful. Many of them, unable to make social advancement and adapt to the harsh conditions of life without the support of their relatives, managed to lose the only housing they had been provided by the state, started drinking heavily, and one day found themselves on the street. Most likely, her schoolmate suffered the same fate, but she remembered him as a very kind and good guy. Joyce fed her guest and made him hot tea. Hugh, don't you remember me at all? She asked. The man shook his head. I woke up in a roadside ditch, almost naked. Some homeless people with a kind soul found me in it, brought me to their shack, warmed me up, shared their clothes, but I don't remember who and where I'm from at all. Joyce was about to tell Hugh how they had studied together, but suddenly she heard her husband's mocking, drunken voice above her head. Oh, good for you, wifey. While I am earning money, you and your lover are having fun. And a decent lover is not found? Though who would look at you? Only bums, probably. Joyce had never seen Albert like that. She was frightened to see her drunken husband swaying to and fro, waving his arms, shouting curses and insults at his wife, and did not know what to say. In the meantime, Albert took out a suitcase, threw his things in it, and whispering a wish for their happiness through his teeth, left, slamming the front door. Joyce burst into tears and lashed out at Hugh with accusations. She considered that he was the reason her husband had abandoned her, and she pointed the man to the door. Hugh silently left the apartment and hunched over on a bench again. When Joyce calmed down a little, she became insanely ashamed of her behavior because she had invited him in herself and then rushed at the man like a fury and threw him out. She went outside again, where meanwhile, it was already terribly cold. Forgive me, please. Let's go inside. It's very cold. The man did not answer. He was shivering, and Joyce realized that he had a high fever. She helped him get up and walk to her apartment and put him to bed at home. When Joyce checked his temperature, she was horrified and became fearful for his life. Hugh was rattling around in a feverish delirium. Joyce sat by his bedside all night, changing compresses and trying to give him medicine. In despair, she grasped the man's hand and began to pray. Four days passed, and during that time, she did not leave his side, even one step at a time. At last, Hugh opened his eyes and looked at the woman leaning over him and whispered, Joyce, my darling, is it you? Did you really remember me? cried the woman joyfully. I have never forgotten you, replied Hugh. The sick man was on the mend, and most importantly, his memory had returned to him. Probably a severe illness was the impetus for this. Hugh soon told Joyce his story. It turned out that after the girl rejected him at the prom, he gave himself the word that he would achieve everything in life, find her, and marry her. As a result, he did become a successful businessman, but he never got married. Then one day, during a business trip to a nearby city, he decided to drive a hitchhiker's, as he thought, a couple of young people in love. But it turned out to be bandits who hit a man on the head, took all his belongings, documents, and car, and they threw the emotionless hue in a ravine. There he was found by the homeless, half undressed and remembering nothing of his past life. But he did not want to live with the tramps. Something must have remained in his subconscious that he could not live such a life. 
Hugh wandered around the city, trying to remember something, and Joyce found him in such a position. Maybe it's destiny, asked Hugh, looking intently into his savior's eyes. Maybe, replied Joyce thoughtfully. Once a little stronger, Hugh left to get his business under control, and Joyce was left to wait for his return. She didn't realize right away that she no longer missed Albert, and she wasn't at all curious about with whom or where her husband was. Perhaps there had never been any love between them if everything was so easily and quickly resolved. She was caught in such a state of mind by Albert. So where is your hobo? Did he leave you? Joyce, I said a little too much the other day. It happens, but you're good too, you know. Well, all right, I forgive you. Let's start all over again. Joyce looked at her husband with a new look, as if she had taken off her rose-colored glasses. Do you forgive me? What happened? Did your young mistress find some other man? Or no one to take care of you, do your laundry, clean, cook for you? Or maybe your mom wouldn't let you get a divorce? No, honey, it's not going to work out. Go away. Albert rushed towards Joyce in a rage, pushed her with a swing, and swung at her again. Joyce screamed in terror, but Albert did not have time to land a second blow. His arm was intercepted by Hugh, who had quietly entered the apartment at the height of the quarrel. Hugh threw Albert away, and he hit the wall and crawled out of the apartment in shame. Hugh hugged Joyce, wondering if she was all right, but she reassured him that everything was now definitely all right. Hugh took Joyce to his town, where they played a modest wedding, inviting only people close to them. There was no need for them to display ostentatious luxury, because the most important thing was love and fidelity between people. And two years later, the couple, refuting all medical diagnoses, had a healthy and strong baby boy, making them the happiest parents in the world.